Okay, so floorbot challenge. What is a floorbot? Floorbots are robots too big for the table. Um, the floorbot challenge has three phases. Phase one, go from one end of the room to the other and back. Phase two is to find an object in the room, and phase three is to fetch that object. Okay? So we'll start this off. I've got Marvin over here. I've mapped out with Ross, robot operating system, the front part of the room. And uh, I'm navigating. I can navigate from one end of the room to the other. Uh, and then, um, hey Tyson, uh, in keeping with the um, um, habit of um, uh, creating things while you're doing the presentation, uh, right now, okay, so I'm starting him on this side of the room, okay? Right now he's at the other side of the room, that's the destination. I need to get that coordinate and put it into the program. Uh, by the way, everybody's on the uh, Homebrew Robotics Club mailing list. That's where all the robot news is. And I posted the code here. It's basically a Ross tutorial simple navigation goal and um, plugged some coordinates into it and copied and pasted the subroutine and, and got it going to multiple waypoints programmatically. Out of the box with RVs, you can click on a goal and the robot will navigate there. So this is kind of behind the scenes here. So I'm where I want to be. And so I'm going to do a Ross topic, echo, AMCL underscore pose. Uh, that uh, gives me the adaptive Monte Carlo um, localization pose. Here's some, uh, I accidentally put it in the middle of the room first. So bear with me. Here we go. Uh, Ross uh, topic, echo, AMCL pose. And you get X, Y, Z uh, coordinates. Uh, the, uh, the X and Y uh, is the horizontal plane that is the floor. And the Z is your orientation. Uh, that uh, tells you the, which, what angle the robot's, uh, uh, which way the robot's facing. Thank you. Okay, so here I'm going to take this coordinate and I'm going to my program. Yeah, this is a live demo here. And uh, where is my program? I ask myself, you know what? It's not here. Okay, so not to be undone. Bear with me, floor bot. Um, Spelled it. Thank you. <laughs> Close the speaker, speak, speak, speak. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> All right. Hey, there we go. Okay. So. I'll show you. Can we talk now? No. <laughs> Alright, try now. Bear with me. What am I supposed to try? Oh, okay. Working without a net here, folks. The idea was My robot's over here. R. Copy. And bear with me. Okay, here comes the destination. Boom. One, two, three, four. Okay, bear with me. V I, an old friend. Okay. So, without any for, actually, let, let me let me do this. Bear with me. Uh, here comes teleop twist. I'm going to remote control the robot back to the origin. Okay. You can see him moving in the map. So. You can see the walls of the of the. You can see the walls of the room. And the podium. And uh, thank you. And uh, let me see the podium there. You saw that on the uh, on the screen. Uh, oh, I see an obstacle coming towards me. Marco, Marco, move your bot. That's okay. It's confusing you. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> I noticed they both have DJ live hours. That's kind of cool. cool. So my robot was picking him up. And, uh, uh, yeah. hmm. Okay, so I'm at a starting place here. Okay? So this is one end of the room. The floor bot challenge, phase one. 
I shall go from one end of the room to the other and back. So, oh, I need to compile my code. Bear with me. <laughs> Bear with me. Now, this is fun. This is fun. Okay, so here we are. Boom, boom. I modified the locations. Okay. Cat can make, ladies and gentlemen. Maybe you should upgrade the kernel. Not now. <laughs> you don't have to. Okay, so come on, come on. This would be totally worth it once it gets finished. Here. That's where it's <laughs> Okay, it compiled, so now I'm Ross Run, Floor Bot, that's the package, it's also the node name, and boom, I'm sending a goal. The robot is, we should be receiving a goal. Oh, you see the path plan? So it's, it's, it's planned to go across the room, now it thinks there's an obstacle in front of it. I should have used one of my favorite commands. Let's see. It's beating me up. Yeah, bear with me. Yeah, clear cost maps. Bear with me. Uh, clear cost maps. I'm not proud. Just go around it anyway. There he is. Okay. So, here the robot is going from one end of the room to the other. Well, Wayne would be so proud. Right. <laughs> of course he's going. Oh, uh, this uh, Ross, this Arv is, by the way, is very cool. It's all three-dimensional and stuff. And it's like you can turn the robot sideways. And you can see the LiDAR scans. They're four inches high. You see them there? <coughs> Isn't that cool? Ralph Gnock wrote this. Um, that's the universal robot descriptor. What do you call it? Somebody help me out here. URDF. URDF, thank you. But that gives you the little model of a robot. So here you see him programmatically. I'm not, I'm not driving, seriously. <laughs> He was getting close to the crowd there. A little obstacle avoidance. That wasn't there before. Oh, you may be standing in his space over there. All right, I'll get out. All right. I appreciate that. Yeah, you're right on the spot. Oh, okay, cool. So here he goes. Oh, this would be fun. Okay, got new plan, got new plan. Got new plan. He's missing some loops there, got new plan. He's almost at the destination. Come on, baby, you can do it. Kind of exciting, huh? Got new plan. Getting a lot of new plans. <laughs> Ross is great, by the way. Let me give my Ross pitch while we're waiting on this. Recalculating. Um, pardon? Recalculating. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Ross started in 2007 at Villa Garage. And, and Ross um, was developed for a quarter million dollar robot called the PR2. 400,000. Pardon? 400,000. Almost half a million dollar robot. Thank you, Tim. That makes the story much better. Um, <laughs> Robot well, armor was only 200,000. Oh, look, look. He's actually, he got to the goal. I don't see it there, but I see him path planning across. So he's headed to the other end. Okay. Oh, come on, baby. Avoid those obstacles. Oh, Gloria. Um, Thank you very much. Not obstacles. The PR2 cost over $400,000. And the software developed for it is open source. Uh, that is, you can use it and not have to uh, pay anybody or get anybody's permission. Um, 
the PR2 is a two-armed robot, and its claims to fame are it can plug itself in. Valuable skill for a for a, a free-range robot, spot an outlet and plug itself in. Um, actually, the holy grail of robotics, it can fetch a beer, and uh, from the refrigerator, uh, and um, it can even fold clothes. Of course, it took it 20 minutes for a towel, but you put it into a room with a pile of clothes, and at the end of the day, it's all they're all folded. Uh, the software scales, so you change the wheel diameter and the track width, and software developed for a $400,000 robot runs on our $400 vacuum cleaner. And so what you see here is something that we're working on in the SV Ross group. Okay, there we have it. Yay. The yeah. robot has gone from one room to the other. Back. That's, uh, let me make a note here. Can't pee. <laughs> <laughs> For really, real. You listening, Chris? Floorbot challenge. Phase one. Yeah, thanks for that. Can you do phase two? Not right now. <laughs> uh, anyways, um, so uh, yeah, we're doing this uh, with the uh, with the bot that in the SD Ross. The deal is that the uh, Nito bot that has a lidar. Okay, staring to the lidar, and. Um, uh, it's been, and, and so we're building these, they're called MaxBots, uh, with the Raspberry Pi, and the, the bot deck has an API uh, that you can drive the wheels, uh, read the odometry, read the LiDAR scans, and that plugs into Ross's uh, mapping and navigation, <coughs> bless you, um, and um, logging, and um, the visualization tools, you know, and all, 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 of, all of the things that, uh, that Ross gives us. So there's Floorbot Challenge Phase 1. Who else has a Floorbot? Mark Johnson, ladies and gentlemen. So this bot is called Robo Magellan because everyone was, or a few people were concerned that all the bots had men names. So Madge Ellen is what the bot's <laughs> name is. And, uh, She's been here, she's uh, got the LiDAR and all that kind of cool stuff, and she's bounced around in a closed container and found the farthest distance and done all that sort of stuff in previous memo, you know, demos. Uh, now today, uh, for those in the back row, uh, this is what uh, she looks like. And uh, she's got a little camera like the other one, so it's similar in that it's going to be trying to find this AR tag far into the room, far into the room. And lo and behold, it's capable of seeing it here at just almost 10 meters. I don't want to push my luck. I'm just going to start here <laughs> and uh, avoid the rush. I'm just going to go to the other side if everything works right. This, believe it or not, is number five. I'm pretty sure Rohan would know that. But uh, I'm going to put number five over here. And that one over there is uh, number four. So now we're going to, uh, on the display, tell me how far it is. Again, it's ROS. The computer is also on ROS. It's uh, operating by looking at uh, uh, output from the robot, that which ROS supports and so forth. I didn't go into all that before, but like I say, the, the other bot had uh, JavaScript, uh, ROS bridge, webcam interface, all that kind of weird stuff. And this one also has the same kind of abilities, except for this one is a Raspberry Pi 3, which has a uh, built-in uh, Wi-Fi. And so I don't have to worry about the dongle. And Pi 3 is very nice for making uh, ROS-based robots. All right. Uh, Ralph, what I just did is unplug the cam and plug it back in again because of our discussion. <laughs> So I didn't have time to change that much. Uh, we're going to need to move that because it's going to probably run into that that bot there. <laughs> oh, and we got carpet. So we'll see what happens. But this worked really nicely at home. Of course, that doesn't help when you're doing a demo. So uh, actually, I'll just pick this up. So it's getting started right now, and uh, yeah, it found the tag. 
So uh, it should be starting to move. Not the speed of light. It's a little, little lower than the speed of light. <laughs> so this is going to take a while. Actually, I could have cranked it up to this. Now, now what it's doing is it's going to move forward a certain amount based on the distance. Oh, it's got challenges like people walking in front of the target, so that's cool. And uh, it's going to go a ways and then stop and uh, check where the target is and make sure it hasn't drifted off. Actually, it's going really straight. <laughs> Too bad FiddlerBot couldn't do that. <laughs> uh, Basically the same program? Uh, so actually, uh, on my GitHub site, I have various uh, things. One thing I do is I have this thing called base control which is also a queue-based system where you, you send it operations and what you want it to do. There, I think it's going to re retry to find it now and correct. All ROS and some pieces are the same as FiddlerBot, but compiled to run on a Pi 3 and not on a BeagleBone Black. I, I started with the BeagleBone Black because the, the Pis weren't far enough along at the time. Yeah, he knows where it is. He's at 500 and... Uh, 540, so it should go into movement again any, any moment here. Oh, it, it's still, it's trying to rotate to the goal, but because of the carpet, I made it too tight. I made it a two degree <coughs> window. So uh, rather than change that in a ROS parameter, I'm going to see now it started rotating a little bit. I'm going to kick it. So, um, because of the carpet, I should have made the threshold more like plus or minus five degrees. But only, now he's happy again. But he was unable to achieve the two. Because whenever it started, he'd go hey, too far. <laughs> and I also should have jacked it up to like three times this speed. But I didn't. Sorry. <laughs> does it have dynamic parameters? Yes, it does. Oh, I, oh, oh sorry. No. It's Ross launch parameters. So, but it rereads Ross launch. So if I wanted to, yes, I could go in and risk it all and change the uh, file now. I mean, I might as well. It's taken forever, I suppose. Oh, wait, wait, wait. You've gotten to one end of the room, right? Is it going to turn around and come back? No, that's, no. That's why I said I might want to jack up the speed. It's not aiming for the fiducial, though. Yeah, so, so see, now, see now he's rotating towards the fiducial, but uh, it's having a little bit of grief. He did rotate part of the <laughs> she, <laughs> I've busted. <laughs> so anyway, it's a, when it gets maybe another 30 centimeters or up close to right here, it's going to stop and it's going to try to turn around and see this one. Uh, I'll look on here and see if it's finding it. If it's not finding it, I'm going to pull the tag up about four meters because we're not I don't proud. want to go completely. We're yeah. not proud as yeah. campuses. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but all of this is that actually. Counted? That counted? It reached one side of the room? That's good enough. Okay. I, I'm wondering if it's doing the same thing with the rotation it's again. It's not a contest. Uh, ro yeah, it's still trying to rotate. Oh, I'm sorry. It's turned around and it's looking for tag five. Watch out for that robot. It is getting, wow, 11 Watch meters. Out. Oh, yeah. 11 meters is a long ways. <laughs> so I think I'm going to um, try the, the trick here to let it reread the, uh, re -read the file with a faster speed. I'm also, I think, because it's doing these micro rotations for that, I'm going to attempt to uh, get it on track here so at least it can start. And then I'll crank up the speed. Dynamically. It's not really dynamic. The newer ROS has the ability to use these other sorts of parameters. I, I'm using a reread the launch file situation here. Uh, so I'm let's just see. Using the term as an adjective. Robo nav rotate. Dynamic drive speed. Light speed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't, I don't think it has a ludicrous, but uh, I should have coded that. Rotate, and which way is it trying to rotate? It's continuously trying to rotate. Oh, drive.
drive speed changed from, oh no, that's just, here we go, yeah, it, it looks like, so the node that's doing the motor control, I have a main control node, and I have all kinds of accessories on this, it's got GPS, it's got the LiDAR thing I talked about, it's got all these nodes, they're all separate ROS nodes, processes, they're all processes, and then, yeah, it's not picking up the speed, so I might as well talk through this. <laughs> but uh, learn a little bit about ROS anyway, if, if you haven't been exposed to it. So what you do is you start the launch file and you say, hey, I want this one, I want this one, I want this one. Each of these nodes talks to each other with things called topics, which I think is a silly name. Should have been just message channels or something like that. But whatever, <laughs> Tony's here. It was great, great, <laughs> wonderful <laughs> name. <laughs> And, uh, and it has all these processes, and they all talk between these supported uh, topics or message channels. And, um, and then you get, like, I want to pick up, I want to subscribe and look at what the GPS is doing. So the GPS node knows about the hardware that it's working with, and it says, oh, I've got all my stuff. And then it puts it into a format that is kind of standard for ROS and sends it out on this message channel or topic. Main brain, nice name, huh? is my main brain in this. <laughs> and it gets all this information like where, what tags are where, uh, GPS, LiDAR, finding objects, where the walls. It does things like find objects. I have a mode where it finds the closest object. I have a mode where it stays away from the closest object and tries to go to the farthest object, stuff like that. All done in simple decisions in the main brain. And it's getting all that information from all these other cool nodes that are individual. And those are the nodes that I, that I put out on, on the GitHub, uh, and I use them in FiddlerBot and this node. Let him do it, but you'll have to trust me on this. He could go back and forth for the rest of the night until the battery dies. He just, he just needs to make it all the way to the other end. Yeah, he's going to be there shortly. He's right. So Mark, there's uh, like a conical thing on top of the lighter. Does that have anything? Is that just style points? or? Is so I made that on my brand new 3D printer, which I'm having a frickin' blast with, making all kinds of stuff, all kinds of cool stuff. And I made a, instead of, I had a time tunnel vortex in black and white on top of my LiDAR. So now, now I put this little thing, and it's a three-dimensional time tunnel vortex type thing, okay. which is not running right now, but if I just basically plug in the LiDAR power, it would start spinning, performing absolutely no function except for the wow factor. So it's for style points. Style points. You missed it there. And so actually, actually, he's done. So, uh, yeah, he's done. And now is Robo Madge Ellen. I'm going to give you phase one on that one. <laughs> Mark Johnson, phase one, four bot challenge.